promise you have spoken I receive I receive Windows of heaven are wide open Over me Over me And every promise you have spoken kids, it's Miss Melody. Happy belated 4th of July. This month we have a brand new series called Put the Blood on It. Everyone, repeat this after me. Put the blood on it. No, 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 no. Get a little gospel with it. Say, put the blood on it. Great job. I love the passion. The question is, what in the world does that mean? Well, I'm glad you asked. This month, we're gonna take a little deep dive into how significant it is that we have been redeemed by and have access to the blood of Jesus. Let's start with week one's topic, where we will touch on how the blood of Jesus being shed means we have forgiveness from sin and eternal salvation available to us. Everyone, repeat after me. There is power in the blood of Jesus. Come on, get into those gospel roots. I wanna hear you shout it out so that the parents can hear you. There is power in the blood of Jesus. Great, now let's get started. What's up, Awaken Kids? I'm back, Miss Shana here. All right, this month we are focusing on the blood of Jesus. But before I introduce the memory verse, in honor of 4th of July celebrating America's independence, I'm gonna need everybody to get up on their feet. Right now, boys, girls, get up on your feet. From my boys, from my girls, from the volunteers, and the vibe team in the back, cheer with me. USA, 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 USA. <laughs> okay, 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 enough of that, enough of that. Okay, everybody sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down, okay. Let's compose ourselves, eyes on me. Okay, without further ado, let's get into the memory verse. This month's memory verse is 1 John 1, 7, and it goes like this. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Now, repeat it after me. 1 John 1, 7. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Yeah! Good job, everybody. All right, you know how this works. Go home, rehearse it, memorize it, come back, recite it to your leaders, possibly win some prizes, some points. You know the drill. Now let's kick it over to our next segment, Peace. 
All right, ready, Freddy? Ready? My name's Joe. Oh, ready, Joe? Here we yes, go. Sir. Here we go, Joe. Here we go, Joe. All right. Yeah, all right, all right. Hi, hey, boys and girls. How you doing? My name's King Cowboy Carl, and today we're talking about cumin. Uh, talking about cumin. No. Like spice? No, we're talking about the, today. It's, it's cooking community. with King Cowboy Carl. No, t today we're talking about communion. Chameleon? Com like the. Oh, I got it. Okay. Bread and cracker. Hey, boys and girls. Today we're talking about communion. Bam! Oh. There ain't nothing to get through that. That ain't how it's supposed to go. I thought I did pretty good. Hey, boys and girls, my name is King Cowboy Carl, and this is Spiritual Self-Defense. Hey, boys and girls, my name is King Cowboy Carl, and this is Spiritual Self-Defense. Hey, boys and girls, my name is King Cowboy Carl, and this is Spiritual Self-Defense. My name is Punch Joe P. This is... I'm not used to doing that, Chuck. My name is Punch Joe P, and this is Spiritual Self-Defense. Oh, good God! Rule number one, blood of number Jesus. Number one, blood of Jesus. Yeah. So blood That's called emphasis. The blood of Jesus, the way it works, is when the enemy tries to come at you, the blood of Jesus carries like a bat. Oh, you wasn't ready? No. Sorry. The blood of Jesus creates a bat. The blood of Jesus creates a boundary. Let me know when you're ready for me. You're supposed to go out there and say boundary. The blood of Jesus creates a boundary. Yeah. Like that. Ow! Oh. Oh, boys and girls, this right here represents a boundary by the blood of Jesus. Whenever the enemy comes at you, you just plead the blood and it creates a boundary, like this. I'm the enemy and I'm coming at you. I plead the blood! Oh. Oh. That's how that works. Just like oh. that. Go, Lord! So, this represents the blood of Jesus. You see, like Gandalf the Grey did when he was coming up against that crazy demon beast in, I love that in the Chronicles of Narnia or whatever right. that movie was. Yeah, that's he said, y'all, you shall not pass. So yep. whenever the enemy comes at you or tries to put something on you, like sickness or financial deficits or anything good. else like that, you say, that shall not pass in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Get out of here, devil. Good not today. Good Come on. All right. okay. they, get, they get it. They get the point. They get me just stop. Stop. The blood of Jesus. Remember, when it comes to the devil, you kick him when he's down. Oh. Cool. <laughs> what next? I don't know. That's all we got. Yeah. You can just like get away with the cops. Well done. Hey, do your outro. Yeah. Remember, my name's Kicking Cowboy Carl. Forgot my name. Hold on. Sorry. I, I don't know if I can do that. That was pretty awesome. <laughs> don't let fall on there. All right. Hey, remember. My name is King Cowboy Carl, and this has been the blood of Jesus. And I'm punching Joe P. And I just messed up the studio a little bit, but that's all right. Join us next time on www.spiritualsup.com. Fast up. Be a medic. Medic. Yes, okay. Blood sacrifice. I know it sounds super creepy at first, but by the time we're done with this video, you'll have a deep appreciation for the phrase. Blood sacrifice is mentioned throughout the Bible, particularly in the Old Testament, where it is established as a means for atonement and forgiveness of sins, which basically means that we were once dirty with sin and now we've been washed and we're clean. Now, according to the Bible, life is sacred. Now, life and the shedding of blood signifies the giving of life. Now, Leviticus 17.11 says, For the life of a creature is in the blood, and I, God, have given it to you to make atonement for yourselves on the altar. It is the blood that makes atonement for one's life. Now, this verse highlights two key points. Number one, that life of a creature is in its blood. And two, 
blood is given for atonement on the altar. So let's take a look at Adam and Eve, okay? We know that Adam and Eve ate the fruit which they were told not to eat, and so sin entered the world. Therefore, we are all born into a sinful world. But know that God was the person to make the very first blood sacrifice as atonement for Adam and Eve's sin. And it goes a little something like this. Genesis 3, verses 21 through 23. The Lord God made garments of skin for Adam and his wife and clothed them, meaning he took a, an animal, sacrificed the animal, and then out of the skin made clothes for Adam and Eve because all they had was like fig leaves and stuff and it just was not working, <laughs> not for the times. And the Lord God said, the man, is, oh, the man has now become like one of us, knowing good and evil. He must not be allowed to reach out his hand and take also from the tree of life and eat and live forever. So the Lord God banished him from the garden of Eden to work the ground from which he had been taken. Now this, my friends, is an act of mercy. Them being kicked out of the garden and not being allowed to take of the tree of life was for this reason. If Adam and Eve would have eaten the tree of life, that they, uh, they would have been forever separated from God. This was so, this was the first act of blood sacrifice to atone for Adam's sin. Now the big question, how does this affect us? Turn to your neighbor, say, how does this affect me? Turn to your other neighbor, say, yo, how does this affect me? Well, for starters, we don't have to sacrifice animals anymore. That's amazing in and of itself. Now, Hebrews 10 talks about how whenever people would sacrifice a lamb, a bull, or a goat to atone for sin, their consciousness or thought of sin wouldn't just disappear. No, 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 no. It actually would be a reminder of their sin because they had to do it so often. But because Jesus' blood was shed, it was done once and for everyone. Everyone say, once and for all. Once and for all. Perfect. Now that is why we are able to be forgiven and now have the opportunity to have eternal life with God. You see, friends, when we receive Jesus, we are accepting his blood being shed for us. That means when Jesus was on the cross, when he bled on the whipping post, there were certain significant things that happened because of Jesus's blood. And one of those being the forgiveness of sins and salvation. Now, I'm gonna hand it over to your, to your classroom lead. Um, to, to, to give you an opportunity if you've never accepted the sacrifice of Jesus to receive him into your life. Now, basically what you're saying is, let me, let me preface with this. It's not a prayer that saves you, but it is a, the God that we pray to that does the saving. And it's because of the blood of Jesus being poured out on the cross and at the whipping post that we can have eternal salvation and forgiveness of sins. So let me hand it over to your lead. And that being said, we love you guys and we will see you next week.